Welcome back. I'm Muggsy, and today I'm going to explain isotopes. You'll see in front of me I have two Bohr models. Uh, they're similar in many ways and different in one key way. But let's take a look at them individually. Okay, here we have an atom, and in the nucleus of that atom there are seven protons. So that means its atomic number is seven, and therefore this element is nitrogen. There's seven neutrons as well as the seven protons in the nucleus, and then orbiting that nucleus we have seven electrons, two in the first orbital and five in the second. Over here we have an atom, and in that nucleus there are seven protons. And if it has seven protons, therefore its atomic number must be seven, and this element must be da -da -da, nitrogen as well. And this element also has seven electrons, two in the first energy level and five in the second, but it has eight neutrons. And so this is a version of nitrogen, these are both different versions of nitrogen with the same number of protons, the same number of electrons, but different numbers of neutrons. And that doesn't really affect its chemical properties, because remember the chemical properties of an atom are largely determined by the electrons which correspond to the number of protons. Neutrons just kind of add mass and make the element heavier the more neutrons you add. So how do we distinguish between these two versions of nitrogen? Well, these versions are called isotopes. An isotope is just a version of an element that has different numbers of neutrons. And the way we distinguish them usually is you can just write a dash and then write the atomic mass of that element. So this particular uh, nitrogen over here has seven protons plus seven neutrons for a total mass of 14. So we'd call this N14. Um, you can also write it this way. This is a common way to write it. You would just put the little 14 up in the corner like that, N14. You could also write it out as nitrogen 14. All three of these things are saying the same thing. It's nitrogen with an atomic mass of 14. You might ask, what about all these electrons? Well, remember, electrons are incredibly small compared to protons and neutrons, so we can more or less just ignore them when calculating the mass. So, seven protons plus seven neutrons equals the total atomic mass of 14. So this is N14. Uh, let's take a look at this one over on this side. It's got seven protons, but it has eight neutrons. That means it has an atomic mass of 15. So we would call this N15. We could also write it this way, 15 up in the quarter, and then the atomic symbol written out like it would be normally, or we could call this nitrogen 15. Now, there's nothing special about nitrogen. Pretty much every element out there in the world has different isotopes, has different versions with different amounts of neutrons. Now, you might be a little bit confused at seeing the atomic mass of N14 and the atomic mass of N15, but when you look in the actual periodic table of the elements, you don't see 14 or 15. Okay. So we know that we have these two isotopes of nitrogen, one nitrogen 14 with a mass of 14, and one uh, nitrogen 15 with an atomic mass of 15 AMUs, or atomic mass units. But if we look at the actual periodic table itself, we'll see that the atomic mass is reported as 14.007. Now, what's the deal with this number? Well, as you may remember from my atoms video, atomic mass is an average of all the isotopes out there in the world. So chemists have gone out there and measured how much nitrogen is in this form, N14, and how much of it is in N15 form, and they've averaged those all together to get this average atomic mass for nitrogen. Now, before you do any math here, you should be able to look at this number and know that it's the average of these two and you should be able to tell me which one of these two isotopes is much more common. Think about it right now. Okay, if you said N14, you're right, it's way more common because this number 14 is very close to 14, 14.007 is very close to 14, but it's not that close to 15. 
So I bet it's something like 99.9% uh, N14 and 0.001 or something like that of N15. But we can do the actual math to figure this problem out. So the way we would solve a problem, if we wanted to know exactly how much, let's say, N14 there is, is we would use a weighted average. So a non-weighted average would be, we just add up 14 and 15, we divide them by the number there are, there's two of them, and we would get 14.5. But that's not what we did here. This is a weighted average because they're different amounts. They're not the same. You can't just divide them by two. But we know something about the percentages of each of these. We know that let's say there was 75% N14, how much N15 does there have to be? Well, it would have to be 25%. Because whatever percentages these are, they have to add up to 100% because there, there's no other, as far as we know, for this problem, uh, isotopes of nitrogen. So that actually means we could set this up as an algebra problem. For instance, we'd say the average mass, 14.007, is equal to however much N14, we'll call that X because we're not that creative, um, and the mass of N14 is 14, plus however much, we'll call that Y, N15, and the mass of N15 is 15. Okay, and again, we know something else about X and Y, and that is X plus Y is equal to 100, but um, let's not use percentages, let's use decimal form, it'll be easier for our math. So X plus Y is equal to, now that we know X plus Y equals one, we can eliminate one of these variables because we can't solve an algebraic equation with multiple variables. But if we just had X's or just Y's, we could in fact solve that variable, right? So the way I would do this, if I wanted to get X by itself, is I would subtract Y from both sides of the equation. These would cancel and I would get X equals one minus Y. And so now that I know what X is, I could replace any X's I see with one minus Y. So let's rewrite this, plugging the value of X into that X right there. So I have 14.007 equals one minus Y times 14 plus Y times 15 or we could just call that 15y. Okay, distributive property means that we need to, if we're multiplying by one minus y, we need to multiply 14 by both of those things. And so let's rewrite this one more time. We get 14.007 is equal to 14, one times 14 is 14, minus 14y, y times 14 is negative 14y plus 15y. Now we can do a little bit of simplification. So we have negative 14y plus 15y. Well, 15 minus 14 is just equal to y, right? So if we were to rewrite this whole thing, we would get 14.007 uh, is equal to negative, uh, sorry, 14 plus y. And then we want to isolate the variable. We want to get this y all by itself. So let's subtract y from, uh, let's subtract 14 from both sides to get rid of that 14. And we, this is going to cancel and we're going to end up with y is equal to 14 minus 14 is zero. So 0 0.007 is equal to y. Okay, now, what does that mean? That doesn't have anything to do with the problem I asked you. I asked you how much of all nitrogen out there is nitrogen 14, and based on just logic, we said it was gonna be a lot, like something like 99 or more percent, but that's not what I see here. Well, this isn't our answer to the overall problem. This is just what Y is. So, um, 
if you were to plug in this y value for our actual y, you would see that 0.007%, because this is y right here, of all um, nitrogen out there is uh, N15. That's what we actually calculated here. So this is 0 0.007, right? And it's not a percentage, it's a decimal, but we could convert it to a percentage pretty easily by just dividing by 100, or I'm sorry, multiplying by 100. So this becomes 0.7% of all nitrogen out there in the world is N15. Well, how much is N14? Well, just 100% minus 0.7, because this is the only other version of nitrogen, right? So that would be 99.3%. Did you see how I got there? If we know how much N15 there is, 0.7%, we just take 100%, subtract 0.7, and we get 99.3% of all nitrogen out there in the world is N14. And again, that tracks because we expect it to be a big number because the average 14 is much closer, sorry, 14.7, 0 .007, <laughs> is much closer to 14 than it is to 15. So it kind of makes sense. Okay. I know that was a lot of information, so let's try another similar problem with another example. If you look over here, we have two isotopes of chlorine, one with an atomic mass of 35 and one with an atomic mass of 37. Remember, because they're isotopes, everything about these two chlorine atoms are the same, the protons, the electrons, the only thing that's different is the number of neutrons, this bottom one, chlorine 37, just having two more neutrons than chlorine 35. Okay, so what if we wanted to know how much of all the chlorine out there in the world is uh, chlorine 35 and how much is chlorine 37? Well, that's another math problem we could solve just like we did the last one, and that starts with looking at the periodic table and checking the reported atomic mass of chlorine. So if we look it up, we see that it's 35.45 atomic mass units or AMUs, which basically means 35.45 protons or neutrons. Their mass is basically the same. Okay, now once again, before we do any math, which one of these two atomic masses do you think is more common in nature? Chlorine 35 isotope or chlorine 37 isotope? The right answer is chlorine 35, because 35.45 as a number is much closer to 40, 35, it's only 0.45 away, than it is to 37. Uh, it's 1.55 away from 37. So I could kind of look at that math right there actually, and com compare those two and see that uh, this probably is about 75% and this is about 25%. But that's a little bit advanced math that I'm just doing in my head. We don't have to do that because we have algebra. Okay, so this is the prevalence of all of both these isotopes. So we know that 35.45 is the weighted average of however much chlorine 35 there is plus however much, we'll call that Y, chlorine 37 there is. Now, once again, the thing we know about these two numbers, X and Y, is they have to add up to 100. If these are the only two isotopes of chlorine, then all the chlorine in the world must add up to 100%. So that means um, if we're doing that in decimal form, instead of 100, we're using the number one. So X plus Y equals one. And so if X plus Y is equal to one, then we could just think of that as being X equals one minus y, and we can plug this value in for x. So now instead of writing it out the way we did before, we could write it out as 35.45 equals uh, 1 minus y times 35 plus 37y. Right, 37 times y is 37y. Okay, distributive factory, factor means that we... Um, Sorry, 
Distributed, <laughs> distributive property means that we take the 1, multiply it by the 35, and we also take the negative y and multiply it by the 35. And then we'll rewrite our equation as this. 35.45 equals 35. Right? 1 times 35 is 35 minus 35y plus 37y. That's our new written out equation. Okay, now let's just kind of do our normal basic algebra stuff and try and get our variables on one side of the equation, get everything stacked together so we can solve for y. Okay. So 37y minus 35y is just 2y. That's easy. So now we have 35.45 equals 35 minus plus 2y. Okay. Isolate the variable y. We want to get it all by itself. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract 35 from both sides. This is going to cancel. 35 minus 35 is just 0. And 35.45 minus 35 is just 0. 0.45 is equal to 2y. If we know what 2y is, we just got to figure out what y is. Divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals 0. 0.45 divided by 2, which is 0. 0.225. Okay, that was a lot of algebra. And at the end of all that, we still don't really have our answer. We just have this 0 0.225 is y. Now, what is y? Well, y is up here. And that is the percentage as a decimal of um, chlorine 37, right? And so if it's a decimal, in order to put it into percentage form, we need to move the decimal place twice. We need to multiply it by 100, right? 50% is the same as 0.5, and 0 0.225 is the same as 22.5%. So that's how much chlorine 37 there is. How do we figure out chlorine 35? Well, that is a very simple arithmetic problem. These two need to add up to 100, so 100 minus 22.5 is what? 77.5? Which is pretty close to my estimates at the beginning of this problem. Again, we look at this number 35.45. Uh, that number is a lot closer to 35 than it is to 37. So we expect most of the chlorine out there in the world to be chlorine 35. And indeed, that's what we found. About three quarters of the, pro of the chlorine in the world is 77.5 and about one quarter is 22.5. This math can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're rusty in your algebra skills. I recommend practicing these isotope problems a bit. And then of course, just remember the basics of isotopes. Isotopes are different versions of an element that have exactly everything the same, except the number of protons in the nucleus, which can be slightly different. Okay, uh, this is a lot to take in. I wish you well. I'll see you next time.